Hi, my name is Paul Gordon with iState.tv, and you are watching Headlines You May Have Missed for Wednesday, January 10th, 2018. I am calling this particular episode, Is the State Department Spreading Fake News in Hungary? State Department's OPPO funding in Hungary, states protect ISP monopolies, Germany's big social bashing, Bitcoin is terrorism, silent monks are terrible witnesses, EU's big social bashing, and more on this episode of Headlines You May Have Missed. Now, what we do on this show is we try to get through as many headlines as we possibly can, and we have a timer. We do this in 20 minutes, so let the timer start now. Our first headline, State Department funding OPPO media against pro-American Prime Minister of Hungary. In a rich irony of ironies, it appears that the State Department is busy funding opposition media to counter the current Prime Minister of Hungary, Viktor Orbán. The Prime Minister is a supporter of President Trump and a close American ally. So why is the State Department funding opposition media in that country? And given the cries of Russian meddling in American politics through alternative and social media, why is the State Department doing the same thing and in opposition to an American ally? This would, this would fall in the category of things that make you go, hmm... So it's a, it's a GOP congressman, and this, is, this story is from The Hill. So it's a GOP congressman that's asking lawmakers to sign onto a letter urging the State Department to pull funding for independent media in Hungary. In a Dear Colleague letter, Representative Andy Harris of Maryland decried actions by the U.S. that he said distorted the record of Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban, saying that the State Department's decision to put up funding for Opposition media in the country amounted to meddling in the domestic politics of a democratic ally. <laughs> oh, the it's a beautiful I don't I don't know from my perspective from the outside looking in, it's a beautiful thing to watch the government at war with itself, combating itself, working against its own interest. It's I I'm enjoying it, but that's all we have time to talk about. So we're gonna. <laughs> I'm sorry, I am enjoying this story way too much. We're gonna go to the next headline here, though, because that's what we do. Oh no, I just realized I did something stupid. Okay, so uh, we're gonna get a little extra time here because I switch scenes and I realized, dude, you can't switch scenes. You're gonna mess up your clock. I didn't realize that to afterwards. So hey, bonus that first story. Yeah, that's extra time. Congratulations. I know you guys are all like, yes, more than twenty minutes. Yes, but not tomorrow, kids. Not tomorrow because I won't make that mistake again. State level net neutrality rather than ending state protected ISP monopolies. So states are introducing their own net neutrality protections and possibly going up against the Federal Communications Commission in the process. And so I'm going to get to my editor's note here. And, 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 and my point that I make in my little editor's note, and then I'll get to the story, is, is rather than ending the regulations at state and local levels that create the monopolies that make net neutrality possible, these states are choosing instead to further empower themselves. Well, uh, actually, I said possible. Really, the better word here is uh, that uh, make net neutrality necessary is really the word that I should have put there. So, so the states are, are gathering. They're not looking and saying, hey, maybe we should end the monopolies. You know, maybe we should do what we can then to stop all these regulations that are preventing ISP uh, competition. 
because ISP competition would really it would really prevent IP ISPs from being too aggressive against their customers. But no, 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 no. They're going to go ahead and enact a layer of quote unquote protection from regulations that could, they could just as easily end. That should tell you all you need to know about what's really going on with net neutrality. I understand the folks out there that make the argument about why, well, without net neutrality, you know, we, the consumer might be screwed and that remains to be seen. Maybe, maybe that's the case. I don't know. But the, the, the point is that the politicians, yeah, they, they could get an act, uh, a really easy fix to the federal government, uh, rescinding net neutrality regulations. And, and they don't want to, because what they really want is to preserve power. And they want to keep the state in control of the means of communication. So this is from this is from Newsy on Friday. A Nebraska state senator introduced legislation to enshrine net neutrality rules at the state level. The Hill notes Nebraska is the first red state to introduce such legislation, but it's not clear how likely the bill is to pass. We'll go on to our next headline here. And our next headline is Germany's shakedown of big social to assure censorship. And I got, I think I have a, oh, I thought I had an editor's note on this. Okay. I don't have an editor's note on this. So Germany takes on the social media giants. This is from Carnegie Europe. So on January 1, a new German law aimed at reigning in, reigning in social media came into force called the Network Enforcement Act, or NetsDG. Social media companies from Facebook and Twitter to YouTube, Instagram, blah, blah, will be legally oblig obliged to remove, quote, and they didn't put this in quote, but I will, quote, illegal content from their sites. They'll have a limited amount of time to do so. I believe 24 hours. If they fail to act, they will face fines up to 50 million pounds, which is $3 in America. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Actually, it's, it's uh, I don't even know. That's not pounds. Is that a Frank sign? What is that? Is that a Euro sign? I don't even know. What is that sign? Let me, let me, uh, oh, never mind. Uh, the law is interesting for several reasons. They say interesting. It's interesting. Whoever wrote this bill really doesn't have a problem with the, with the boot of the state on their neck. Probably even welcomes it. But anyway, the law is interesting for several reasons. It puts the onus on the social media giants, not the courts, to decide, oh my. So now the social media giants have to, I guess they're going to have to hire lawyers. It's raising the cost of uh, social media. This is, to me, this this whole process that's going on, and it's going on in Germany and the EU, and I think I have a couple other stories coming up here about this, but this is, this is really the strategy in a way of uh, holding, say, holding gun manufacturers liable for what people do with guns. It's intended to price them out of the market. They want to get rid of this big social influence in their countries because they can't control it. And I'm sure if and when they manage to reduce the effectiveness of big social in their countries, they'll come up with government programs to meet the social media needs of of its citizens and it, and it'll be it'll be you know it'll be gov social so gov social's on the way folks let's go to the next headline here fox news pushes bitcoin will fund terrorist narrative and that is totally my headline now their headline is Bitcoin can help terrorists secretly fund their deadly attacks. Now, before I read the Fox News excerpt, I'm going to go to my editor's note here. I want you to watch for an increase in stories like this, which are intended to appeal to the conservative fear of loss of law and order. Rule of law, my laws. This is the fear that, if tapped into, will create support among conservatives for increased regulations of cryptocurrency. So the one narrative will be to the progressives, cryptocurrencies are just making the rich richer, and really they're, 
they're 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 creating even more of a divide between between the haves and the haves nots. We need le- regulations to assure that these people just can't take their own wealth and benefit from it without giving to the poor. That'll be the progressive narrative to encourage uh, and support uh, regulation. And then the conservative narrative is terrorists and drug dealers are using this for nefarious ends. And we don't stop them. We're all going to die. So watch for that narrative on the conservative side and the, uh, the, the, the rich and poor narrative from the progressive side On to the next headline. This, this is a little levity thrown in here. I'm going to try to throw in a couple of these in these, in these uh, headlines you may have missed. Silent monks impede search for France's most wanted man. So uh, police struggle with silent monks as search for Francis most one leads to the monastery. Armed police raided a southern French monastery on Tuesday after reports that an elusive Catholic aristocrat, whoa, a Catholic aristocrat, that's, that's incredible. I don't even know what that means. Suspected of murdering his entire family while was hiding there. So worshippers had cited a man resembling Javier Dupont de Lijon during Mass at the monastery. The descendant of a French count, Dupont de Lijon, is one of France's most wanted fugitives. I'd I'd say so. I mean, he's a Catholic. uh, What did they say he is again? (laughs) A Catholic aristocrat who who's been on the run for nearly seven years following the massacre of his wife and four children. So. 20 officers surrounded the monastery in Roquebrun sur Argen, a medieval village near Caen, where Dupont du- du- de Légionne was last seen leaving a budget hotel in 2001. Initially, <laughs> this is just one line, but it makes the whole article. Initially, p- police struggled to communicate with monks who have taken a vow of silence. Now, it doesn't go into how they over, overcame that. All they say is, after painstaking inquiries and a two-hour search, however, they concluded that it was a case of mistaken identity. Holy moly, all of that, and it was a case of mistaken identity? I wonder how many people had to break their vow of silence for a case of mistaken identity. And all the list to try to catch, ironically, a Catholic a Catholic aristocrat. And I'm assuming these monks were Catholic. I may be... I may be assuming incorrectly because the Catholics aren't the only ones that have monks, but I'm just saying it's it's highly likely that they went to a Catholic monastery to try to catch a Catholic aristocrat and in the process may or may not have caused monks to break their vow of silence. Who knows? Uh, the last uh, line here is, we believe worshipers in fact saw a monk resembling Dupont de la Jeune. So, so apparently there's a monk that looks like that guy. That's... That's incredible. And right, we're going to move on to our next headline. <laughs> Big social charge with too slow censorship by EU. That's right. That is my title. Now, you're going to see a different title here in a second. EU is charging Big Social with not censoring people fast enough. And they mean to make Big Social pay. Now, this is how the media headline was written. Internet giants not doing enough to take down illegal content. You you see the difference in the titles there? The headlines, see, my headline really tells you what's going on. Their headline sugarcoats censorship and uses the terrifying word illegal. As soon as you hear the word illegal, like your critical thinking brain shuts down. You're like, well, you know, if it's against the law. So... This is from Reuters. Internet giants like Facebook, Google, YouTube, and Twitter are not taking down illegal content from their websites fast enough, the European Union executives said on Tuesday after meeting with the companies. Several European governments have increased pressure on social media companies to do more to remove illegal content. From incitement to hatred and racism to extremist material to counterfeit products being sold online, and the companies have gone to greater efforts to detail the changes they are making. 
Five EU commissioners met with representatives from companies, including Facebook, Google, YouTube, and Twitter in Brussels, to discuss the progress they had made in removing illegal content quicker and more effectively. And then this Julian King, I'll just call him Snakeface. I don't even know what he looks like, but it's got to be with this quote. What is illegal also has consequences. What is illegal? There you go. What is illegal? Well, on whose authority? Well, our authority. Well, your authority. Well, never mind. I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep this a family-friendly show. I almost took it to a blue place, but I restrained myself. What is illegal also has consequences. We need to find ways to remove this content. We want voluntary measures to work. Oh, isn't that nice? But the progress has to be faster. It's... It's currently not going fast enough, and we need to do something about it. Let me, let me, let me degov that speech for you. You know, you know, you know. We have ways. You know, we have guns, and we we can do things. You know, you don't cooperate with us. You know, you don't do things nicely. Maybe, maybe we're not so nicely. You know, you know. Maybe you wake up, and you know the uh, the tax authority is uh, breaking down your door and go rummaging through all of your files, and and maybe some of your workers end up getting thrown down a flight of stairs. I'm not saying that that's gonna happen. I'm not saying um, that I'm for that happening i'm just saying you know this could be a nice operation here you know if if we all agree to do things nicely but if not you know you know things happen there you go and we'll go to our next headline u.s places destroyer in ukraine port and message to russia so apparently the U.S. has got it in its head that it must insist that Russia gives the Crimea over to Ukraine. Now, the Crimea has a long history of being part of the Russian sphere. The Crimea gives Russia access to... I, am I getting this wrong? I think it's the Black Sea. <laughs> it's, it's a pretty vital place for, for Russia to... to to, to keep hold of. There's no way. There's no way in Hecaroni that Russia is going to give up the Crimea. Russia would be a stupid coercive enterprise if it ever actually agreed to this, or it would be a powerless coercive enterprise if it was ever actually forced to agree to this. And this story is from Newsweek. The U.S. Navy's guided missile destroyer Kearney sailed into Ukrainian waters Monday in the third visit by a vessel of its kind to the tense Black Sea. Oh, I got it right there. Uh, to tense Black Sea region since August. See that geography class it, when I was eight paid off. The Arleigh Burke class USS Kearney docked in the port city of Odessa as part of an ongoing commitment by the U.S. military to show support for Ukraine. Ukraine, particularly in the face of Russian aggression. Yeah, I know. It's like, I, I like this one meme that I've seen, you know, Russia, how dare you? How dare you put your country right in the middle of, of 60 U.S. military bases? How dare you? Have you no decency, sir? How dare you? In 2014, masked Russian troops seized Ukraine's southern Crimean Peninsula shortly after protesters has, had ousted the pro-Russian government of Viktor Yanuf, Yanukovych in Kiev. I'll skip over a part here. The U.S., which has three military allies on the Black Sea Basin, has pledged support for Ukraine and conducted a handful of drills with the country. Yeah, I guess I guess if uh, if Putin helped Trump get elected, uh, it's not working out for him. It's 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 he's he's probably not getting the return that he thought he would. I'm not saying that's true. I'm just saying if we'll go to our next headline. Gun trigger modification bill hits Washington state. This is story is from the Chronicle. So, uh, state lawmakers introduced trigger modification gun bill. Senate Bill 5992 to be introduced to the state legislature would ban gun parts intended to increase the weapon's rate of fire. Well, there, that's not too broad. 
that's that's not too broad at all. That was one of the the the, the original way that they did the that they introduced the bump fire stock ban bill in the Congress. It was it was broadly written to include uh, trigger modifications, whatever whatever that means. So what if you get triggers that have have less 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 pound is it whatever it's called pound pound i don't know what it's called you know if it's five pound trigger six pound trigger whatever so if you get a trigger that has a it's a lower pound rating whatever uh that might be considered a trigger modification because if it's uh you know if it's lower poundage to squeeze then it's not good and what about triggers that uh you know, you like a revolver. You know, single fire, and I mean, uh, sing, single action and double action. You know, uh, if if it's single action and you want to make it double action, you know, you know, is double action in and of itself a trigger modification that may, allows you to shoot a gun faster? It is. So the statute includes a ban on products that produce rapid fire burst or other trigger functions. Yeah, that's that's the that, that's the big thing. Other trigger functions. This includes bump stocks, devices uh, that can be attached to a semi-automatic weapon to increase its fire rate. A trigger crank is a similar device that also increases a firearm's rate. And uh, okay, and then of course, uh, clearly whoever wrote the Chronicle is a gun grabber because you did the duty and you made sure to bring up the the terror event. That will trigger the fear that will cause people to not only say, hey, it's okay, government, for you to go ahead and take power in this area, but we beg of you, please take power in this area, because if you don't, we're all going to die, and really, we're not for that. Of course, you're not going to all die, but that's, that's another story altogether. So I get to one more quick headline here, and that is... All right, we'll end on a happy note. FedEx worker finds largest known prime number ever. A Tennessee man recently discovered the largest prime number known to humankind. This is in the Maine Republic. This past week, a FedEx employee from Germantown, Tennessee, made a massive discovery, and it wasn't any packages. John Pace found the largest prime number known to mankind. And that number goes on to more than 23 million digits. So it's longer than anybody really wants to sit down and hear, he says. Yeah, it'll take you a few years to hear it. If you're not great at math, here's a primer. Prime numbers can only be divided by one and themselves. Pace found his prime number as part of an online collective called the Great Internet Mercine Prime Search, or GIMPS. And uh, I encourage you to go to isheadlines.com and read more of this story. So we got 20 seconds here, a couple other stories that we didn't get to. France moves hard against big social and fight for censorship, like I said. Europe is on the march against big social. Pro-blockchain bills introduced in Nebraska. That's right, pro-blockchain pro bills. Turkey vows to remain in northern Syria. Connecticut governor calls on ban to bump stocks. Somaliland journalist jailed for publishing propaganda. And that's it. That's it. Now, that, wasn't, that was actually more than 20 minutes because of my changing of scenes. I use OBS, and uh, I change scenes, and I wasn't thinking, you know, if you change scenes, that little clock that you have on the one scene, it's going to reset, dude. So you got some extra time. You're welcome for that. Well, to get more of these headlines, to read more of these stories in detail, make sure you go to isheadlines.com. That's isheadlines.com. Dot com and also get ready it's uh, as of recording this right now it's 12:55 p.m. eastern standard time in about 5 minutes over at the sovereign network facebook page uh crypto corner live is about ready to uh come on air with uh Kurt Kurt I can never pronounce your last name Kurt Wecker Welker whatever uh, anyway, it's a great show. I watch it as much as I possibly can. I highly recommend that you go over to the sovereign, so the sovereign network, sovereignty network, 
and get ready to watch Crypto Corner Live, learn a lot about what's going on in cryptocurrency news. And also make sure you go to iState.tv and read all of our headlines because we have more headlines than just what you hear about on headlines you may have missed. Some of the headlines on there right now, the rise of ghost guns and the triggered gun grabbers, embrace the AI for, oh, let me go to it. There you go. Ah, there, there you can see it. The rise of ghost guns and the trigger gun grabbers. Embrace the AI for it will make humans prosper. Uh, this is yesterday's show. Gender robots is Oz spook. That's yesterday is daily uh, Tuesday. And then we have a couple more here. But anyway, you get the idea. So be sure you go to iState.tv. And finally, let me remind you that tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is Daily Wednesday. We'll be on the Liberty Principle Facebook page. And uh, that is with myself and with the One True News. And we'll be talking, uh, we'll be doing the Newsfire segment and the Skynetter segment, which is dystopian tech, and Liberty Tech segment, which is, of course, Liberty Tech. So my name is Paul Gordon with iState.tv. You have been watching Headlines You May Have Missed for Wednesday, January 10th, 2018. I'll see you tonight on Liberty Principle Facebook page at 9 p.m. And I'll see you tomorrow on my personal Facebook page. That's Paul Gordon. And if you friend request me, I'm pretty generous in accepting friend requests unless you have like really, really weird stuff on your Facebook page and I probably won't accept your friend request. And with that, I bid you adieu.